So thank you very much, Courtney. And I'm honored that uh, you asked our family to participate in this project. So my story starts on April 10th, 2005. Uh, I was driving in a uh, Subaru station wagon and then I was broadsided on the driver's side by a large pickup truck, uh, something similar to a Ford 150, but I, I don't recall whether it was a Chevy or a Ford. All I know is I got hurt. Uh, the injuries I sustained, I, I received a uh, fractured left clavicle, fractured uh, scapula on the left side. I had nine fractured ribs all on the left side and some of them were multiple fractures. I also had five pelvic fractures. Um, I also experienced a uh, hemopneumothorax, so that was a, a, a collapsed lung. Uh, I was taken to uh, emergency at uh, Denver Health. They uh, intubated me, and this was all on a Sunday, I believe. Uh, I had a tracheostomy, and you can still see the scar here. Uh, they put me on a ventilator, and then I was placed on my stomach to facilitate uh, breathing. They had uh, a great deal of difficulty um, stabilizing my breathing. In fact, uh, I was quite lucky in that uh, this was considered a last resort for placing me on my stomach uh, uh, due to the direction of a gentleman that had been studying abroad in uh, Europe. And this was a technique that he was familiar with. And he happened to be in the emergency room at the time that I entered. Um, the secondary effects of my accident. Um, on that Sunday or Monday, I believe, I had an electrolyte imbalance and that caused an atrial fibrillation. Uh, I'm not sure whether it was a mild heart attack or medium or whatever, but when uh, my wife Candace came to visit me, they had the crash cart out next to my bed. Um, I received, uh, I uh, contracted pneumonia um, because I was on the ventilator. And uh, the trauma also caused uh, an activation of um, uh, some chemicals in my stomach. And this is apparently very common with extreme trauma cases that caused me to uh, get two bleeding ulcers. And uh, near the end of the week, I believe it was on a Saturday, they were having trouble stabilizing my blood pressure. And uh, uh, they just discovered that I had lost over two quarts of blood at that time. So uh, the first week, uh, although I have no recollection of it, apparently was uh, really close to the line uh, and uh, I was very, very lucky. Um, the hospital time uh, I spent, uh, I, I was in SICU, which is uh, surgical intensive care for two weeks. So this is all at Denver Health. I was in uh, the general medical floor for one week. And then after that, I was in the rehab unit for another week. So I was released on May 9th, 2005, almost uh, to the day, one month in the hospital. And then at that point, uh, I initiated physical therapy that went on for two to two and a half months. Um, I, I, have to, uh, I have to input uh, some other things also that uh, really affected my life at the time. And this were, th these were things that were happening to the Tsutsui family. Uh, Candace, uh, prior to my, uh, Candace is my wife, Candace prior to my accident was scheduled for a total hip replacement. Uh, she had to postpone that total hip replacement to later in the year. That was one of two hip replacements in uh, what turned out to be the course of two years, 2005, 2006, very hectic time in the Tsui family life. Um, we at that time also uh, went to Washington, D.C. because my daughter, Akemi, was uh, a finalist in National History Day. Uh, my, my mother went with us that time as well. We went to Italy the following month. This was in 2006 uh, for uh, an academic uh, uh, field trip for Akemi. And uh, I thought I was going to die on those two trips. I was so, in so much pain. And uh, needless to say, on the first trip, uh, it was prior to Candace Sensei's uh, first hip replacement. She was in extreme pain as well. So uh, very trying times for the Tsui family. Um, I have no regrets with regard to this uh, accident occurring, save one. The only regret I have is uh, that I probably am not going to be able to live to be 100, which was a goal that I set for myself as a young man. Uh, the doctors tell me that uh, the, the accident is going to uh, curtail all the uh, 
the full 100 years that were possible for me. So I'm not sure when the end is going to come. It's not going to come at 100 years, though. So, uh, But I'm okay with that. I was very, very lucky. Um, in terms of healing, uh, there are a number of things that are important for this scenario. Uh, the karate, of course, played a very, very large part of it uh, in terms of uh, physical training, in terms of the rehab work, uh, also in terms of all the principles that uh, were taught to me that I try to pass on to my students. And that is to uh, never give up, never give up no matter what the obstacle and that you can succeed at whatever you attempt to do. If you work hard enough, you work long enough, and you just press on. There's an old uh, samurai proverb that says, onward, if only with a spear. And that is the attitude that is instilled in my karate training that I try to instill my students. The other is fall down seven, get up eight. Continue, continue, continue. Never, never, never give up, in the words of Winston Churchill, okay? So the karate training played a big part. The other part uh, that added to my healing was that uh, I had a very good childhood. Um, I grew up in a single fa a parent family. My mother raised the, my, me and my brother, but it was still a very good childhood. Uh, I was never wanting for anything. Um, we weren't wealthy. We weren't well off. Uh, we struggled through many, many times. Uh, we had no transportation. Uh, we were dependent on buses, taxi cabs, and walking. Uh, my mother at the time did housework because she uh, did not have a college education. Um, so, so times were very rough, but um, I, I had a happy childhood. Um, the role model for me at that time was my grandfather, uh, who taught me the value of hard work, that there is dignity in work. And uh, for three summers, I, I uh, worked shoulder to shoulder with him and the migrant workers uh, on a truck farm in Brighton, Colorado. Uh, this is uh, when I was uh, eight, nine, and 10 years old. Uh, so I've always appreciated and soon, soon learned to uh, actually enjoy working. And uh, uh, I, I, uh, I like to work. Uh, so that was my childhood. Um, uh, the karate training, uh, you all know the words, right? Uh, respect, um, uh, never give up, uh, character, uh, service, all these things, uh, obligation, responsibility, all of you know the meaning of those words. Uh, those were all uh, part of my karate training, continues to be part of the, what I teach my students. Um, let me refer to my notes here. It's been a while since I've uh, thought about any of this before. Um, one thing that is really important in my healing process was the time that I spent in the hospital thinking about uh, my accident, also uh, planning a strategy for how I was gonna return to uh, functioning health, was that I had to uh, recognize and uh, very difficult, I also had to accept that my life at the time of the accident was not as good a life as I thought it was. I was uh, working full-time out at the airport. I was actively involved in the National Federation as uh, one of the board of directors and uh, chairman of the referee council. I was working, um, I was teaching at six locations here in Denver. Uh, I was traveling internationally probably pretty consistently every two months. Um, I was content. I was happy to be working all that time. Um, it was right in front of me. I didn't see it. My family life was suffering. My marriage was suffering. I did not enjoy to the full extent uh, my daughter growing up. Uh, I did attend uh, all of these events that highlighted her academic successes, as well as her success outside of school. But still, um, you know, it's not a regret, but uh, it could have been done better. Could have been done better. So that was a, that was a hard thing to swallow, that uh, uh, I was not living my life the way I could live it. So um, there was at that time a 
the light switch went on. The accident was a good kick in the pants for me. And uh, the message was, hey, wake up. There's more to life than just working. Um, the other thing is, uh, as part of my healing process, I think that there has been instilled in me from early on. Uh, and I, I, I can't remember all the people involved in this philosophy, whether it was my elementary school teachers, uh, definitely relatives of mine, definitely friends and colleagues as I've grown up over the years. But I have this fundamental and very strong belief in the goodness of people and the incredible power of the human spirit. And that is one position that I've always taken. Uh, and in my teaching, I, I try to make people think in those terms and also to ask themselves, as I ask myself daily, how can I make the world a better place? And how can I help? So I, I view that perspective, that mindset, uh, as a very important element in uh, this process of healing for me. Um, it is, um, I hope it doesn't sound too naive. Uh, I am 74 years old. The older I get, and each day that I live, I feel stronger and stronger about that belief. Um, with regard to the karate training, on a daily basis as I teach, I try to instill all of the, all of the values of Bushido. Bushido meaning the warrior way, the samurai way. And it emphasizes responsibility, it emphasizes obligation, it emphasizes respect. It emphasizes service, all right? All things that all of you are familiar with. And uh, just as that scene in the movie from The Last Samurai, I, in the very last moments of the movie, when the two characters are on the hillside talking to each other, and they asked about the importance of samurai values. And uh, one of them says, it's no longer needed. And then the, the character played by Tom Cruise says that the values now are needed more than ever. And uh, that, uh, that is how I feel today as well. So those values are important. Uh, they need to continue. They need to be uh, taught. Um, with regard to any issues that you may have with regard to your health, I've outlined just things that have worked for me. Uh, oh, one of the things I forgot to mention is uh, I, I had a, a period of intense training out in California in preparation for the World Championships. I was training daily, well, probably about nine months, not the four-year cycle that Olympic athletes endure, but uh, I was training daily, uh, religiously, diligently, without missing a day for about nine months. And some of the training sessions would go on from eight to 12 hours a day in preparation for the world championships. Uh, I won't bore you with all the details of what I did, but uh, needless to say, I was always tired. I was always hungry. And uh, uh, by the grace of my students and my colleagues uh, who pointed out and encouraged me, I was able to continue. Um, for uh, all of you and for my students, um, I, I think that uh, one very important thing that uh, needs to be done is to try to find a, a quiet place, a place of grace in your life so that you can uh, realize your importance, that uh, you are important, that you live this life in, in the same life that all of us are living in this moment and that you are not alone, and that you are important, that your actions influence people, that you can make a difference, and you will make a difference. And remember always that uh, uh, one source of energy is through your service to others and to make this world a better place. And I think my time is up, Courtney. Um, Oh, I have five minutes. Yeah, you, you're you fine. Want to, Keep going. <laughs> want to switch over to Akemi or?
um, if if you're done, but you have some time if you if you had anything you wanted to add. Um, no, other than I encourage all of you to, uh, if not karate, of course I'm going to tell you, karate mm -hmm. is the best martial art. Do karate, but um, um, karate is not for everybody. Karate is very tough. So whatever activity you pursue, um, and I would say second choice is any other martial art, right? If you're going to work out, which you should do every day, you may as well work out practicing and exercising an activity that may one day save your life. It may save your life in terms of your physical development, or it may save your life in terms of your physical development, right? And probably in terms of both, right? you will be much more successful if you do that. If you can't do a martial art, run. If you can't run, walk, okay? If you can't walk, sit up, sit down in a chair, move, keep moving, okay? Enjoy life, right? It, it is from day to day a movable feast, in the words of Hemi, Ernest Hemingway. Okay? Good luck to all of you. Thank you so much, Sensei. That was so inspiring. Um, I have some questions for you later. Hopefully, we'll have time. Um, but, Akemi, are you there? Uh oh. One second, I'm transferring over the. the okay, thing. yeah, no worries. Well, while we're waiting for uh, Kemi, um, just to give you guys um, a little bit of background about the Kintsugi project, um, I'm just going to give you the link here so you can go find out more about um, our other upcoming programs. And um, you'll you'll notice I'm going to um, kind of brag about Akemi for a moment. This background that I have behind me is actually one of her, um, her artworks. And she just launched a new um, store called Live Deliciously, and you can find it on our Wabi Sabi Market on the, on the website. But she's an incredible, she's a triple quadruple threat. <laughs> um, so she's an incredible artist, um, creative maker, um, as well as, um, you know, a professional karate master. So um, I am, are you ready? Ready. Okay. So I'm going to turn it over to Kemi. I think this is the time when you guys, um, if you're able to, can get out of your seats. Uh, okay, Kemi, take it away. Hello. All right. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. All right. So the kata that we will be going over today is called Sanchi. And Sensei is here. He's going to give a brief um, explanation and historical review of that kata so that you guys can all uh, know what we're working with. Okay. So this is, go this is going to be Sanqing kata. Uh, it uh, originates from uh, Fujian province in China. Uh, it, um, it's still preserved in many Fujian styles, white crane, monk fist, dog, uh, dog style. Um, the Chinese translation for this kata is Samcheng, meaning three battles or three conflicts. Uh, the practitioner of this kata is supposed to be able to overcome the conflict between mind, body, and spirit. Therefore, you have the three battles, three conflicts there. It stresses breathing, concentration of power, and strong posture, all right? Um, one very important concept in practicing kata is called shuhari, right? which is unifying internal and external principles of the kata. Shu meaning strict attention to detail and prescribed tradition, executing the kata precisely as it was taught, precisely. Ha, meaning mastery of that tradition, and ri, transcendence or the freedom from rigid perfunctory movement and an effortless or seemingly spontaneous performance, unmarred by self-consciousness, right? There are many, many other elements, but uh, let's turn it over to Akemi and get you started on this kata. Sanchin kata, sanchin kata. Oh, and I must say that this is not part of the Shotokan syllabus, but we practice many, many different styles. So Sanchin comes from the Goju system. So originated in China, but then traveling over to Japan. 
Right, so right, to start, we all need to learn uh, the stance with which uh, this kata primarily occurs, which is also called sanchi. Okay, so here, if we bring our heels together, right? We bring our heels together and then open our feet just a little bit and then pull our feet out, right? So the edges of our feet are parallel. Okay, so this is the width with which we'll wor be working with. And then here, if you open up and then just one of your feet forward and then let your knees collapse a little bit, okay? So from the side here, you can see it's right here, heel to toe, toes pointing forward at a triangle and then relax your knees in or rather kind of pinch them off, okay? So this is Sanchin stance. And let's just go forward a few times and backwards. Okay, so we're here and you can put your hands on your hips or behind you either way. And each knee, sun, she, and koshin going backwards. Each knee, sun, she. Good. Okay, so that's the stance we'll be working in today. Right. Another thing, right? Right. To start with, proper way to make a fist. Hands out, and there are many different kinds of fists, but this one is just, right, say can, right? Right, curl your fingers in, squeeze, and then thumb over the top here. So you don't want your thumb here or on the inside, should be right here, okay? Right, and to start the kata, right? Heels together, right? And, right, bow. And here we announce the name of the kata, Sanchi. Okay. Hands come in front, left over right. Okay, and our feet are gonna open and then it's gonna go to that stance, that starting stance that we were at here with the edges of our feet parallel. Okay. Okay. Stepping forward in Sanchi and stance here, double up. Good, and if you guys can all just work the best to copy me. My hands are right in front of my shoulders and then my elbows right here. There should be a contraction here in your waki, your armpit area. Okay. All right, left side pulling back, same height as your solar plexus. All right, don't turn your body, keep everything straight and out, punch. And then this hand is going to cross in front and block. Right, so you're back to that double block. Stepping forward again. Okay. And right hand now, back, out, and cross in front, double block. One more, step, back, punch. This time we're not gonna do the double block, we're gonna pull back behind us, cross underneath, Step in front, so you notice my, my knees are inside each other, and then we're going to turn other way. Okay, let's start again. And I'm just gonna angle the camera down just a little bit so you can see my feet. Okay, heels get, heels together. Okay, bow. Announce your kata sanchi. And left on top of right. Open your feet and heels out parallel feet. And step forward, double block. Good, left side first, back. And punch and block. One more step, pull, punch and block. Step, pull, Punch, pull back, under, and cross, and turn. Good. Okay, so we've all done this bit together, right? So 
We're going to do the exact same thing going the other direction. Okay, punch, clock, step, pull, punch, underneath, cross, and turn. Good. And so I'm going to show you just from the side how to do that. Turn, under, there. And then notice my feet are crossed and I'm going to kind of uncurl everything on the opposite side. Okay. Beginning again. Go skate. Okay. Sanchi. Cross, left on top of right, open, and then heels out. And step right leg forward, double block. Left side punching, and cross open. Step, pull, punch, and block. One more step, pull, punch. Underneath, step across, and uncurl everything. Good, so you should have your left side in front. Okay. Punch, block, step, pull, punch, underneath. Same turn that we just did. Uncurl everything, and you should be facing me now. Left side in front. Okay, punch. And hold, step, pull, punch, and back here. Now, we're not going to move our legs. We're going to repeat that right and then left side, okay? Pull, punch, walk, pull, punch. Right, leave this one out. Right hand comes in front to meet it. Right here, open, and both hands come back and out, open hand. So you can see my hands here, right? They're close. This is right, a shuto hand formation. Right. Okay. Right. We're going to do this two more times. Pull and out. Pull and out. Let's start beginning again. Okay. Let's get. And bow. Sanchin. And kamai. Right, left side on top of right. Open and then heels. Good. Double block. Forward. Right leg. Right, left side. Pull. Punch. And block. Step, pull, punch, block. One more. Step, pull, punch. Remember, this is the one we do the turn on. Pull back, under, cross, and turn. So we do three punches total going forward. Now we're going to do two punches back. Punch, block, step, pull. Punch, go back, under and around, cross, turn. Good, All right? We're gonna do two more going forward. Punch, walk, step, pull, punch. This one comes back and in place, right side, roll, and left side. Good, and this one, sorry, right, leave that one out. So when you do your left side, that one is going to finish there. Right side comes in front, pull, and these are a double nukite, right? Spear hand, one, two, and three. Good, let's review this one one more time. And this time we're going to add a little bit of the breathing. Okay, so right, Sensei talked a bit about this before. This kata was particularly done for health and wellness. Okay, so not a lot of 
practical application for fighting for this particular kata, but more time to build the body. So when you're doing this kata now, start to think anytime your body comes towards itself, so you're kind of gathering, that's when you're going to be breathing in. Okay, when things go out, you're going to breathe out. Okay, so that's it. Ready? And Sanchi, that's your kata. Close. And I'll breathe uh, extra loud so that you guys can hear, okay? Okay. And stepping forward, all right? Let's try and do it by memory this time. Remember, three punches going forward. And turn. Two punches going back. Under and turn. Good. Two more going forward. I leave the left side out. Right side comes to meet it. Open and pull three of these. Good, okay. Now this one is a little trickier. Okay, this technique is called mawashi yuke, or a roundhouse block. So we're going to take our right side, right, the side that's forward. Okay, it's going to come over the top. Let's just do this in place for a little bit. Right side, kind of circle your head, circle your head, and then bring it back to kind of the your shoulder joint. Okay. Good. Okay, let's do this five times each. Ni, san, shi, bo. Okay, and bring this hand out. Left side now, right? You're going to circle your I chew down area, sort of your torso. Okay, each knee and pull it to your left hip. Sam, shi, and go. Good, now we're gonna put that together. Okay, so right hand is circling your face, left hand is circling, right, your chew down area. Stepping back with your right leg. So I'll do it slow here. Cross and pull. Good, and then out. Good, and your hands are still aligned with your shoulder and your, okay? We're gonna do the same thing, stepping back again. Right here, bottom hand this time. Circle your face, okay? And out. Good, top hand comes underneath. And step back. Up and down. Okay, let's get okay. okay, good. So that's the whole thing. Let's go over it again. Okay, let's get okay. Sanji. All right. And again, try and add the breathing. Remember, anything that comes in towards you. Right, suck in the air and anything that goes out, exhale. Okay. Okay. And right side starting, three punches. This one pulls back and under around turn. Two punches on this side. Under and around turn. 
two punches going forward towards me. This one stays out and comes out to meet it. Open and pull in. Right, new kite. Okay, this is where your right hand comes and circles your face. Left hand is going to circle your chudan or torso area, stepping back. And here, hand is in your shoulder, hand is in your hip, and out. Stepping back, other way. And then to finish, left side comes underneath, and up, down. Okay. Okay. All right. So I think now we're going to, uh, since it has something you would like yeah, to say, uh, and then we're going to start a Q and A portion. Uh, let me just add that uh, the variation of this kata that Akemi showed you is just one of many different ways to do the kata. Uh, the closed hand techniques that she used uh, is really a more modern uh, use of the arms. I, the, uh, the original styles were open hand, okay? and then this motion of the hands going down, and, these are thrusting movements to the rib cage. All right? um, so the, what you use still uses that, uh, but most of the goju styles are now using the hand closed uh, uh, position. Uh, the breathing also can be varying from uh, interpretation to interpretation. All right? um, the uh, modern, well, our, yeah, well, more, more modern Japanese goju do styles, uh, the breathing is very audible and the volume is, uh, is pretty loud, all right? Um, some of the shito do and most of the Okinawan goju do, the, the breathing is lighter. The uechi do is probably the lightest where it's almost reduced to kind of a hissing sound. So just keep in mind that uh, you have learned just one variation, that there are many variations. And remember that the emphasis for this kata is on, is on developing chi or developing chi, as the Japanese say. So uh, it stresses breathing, concentration of power, and strong posture. And um, even though the emphasis for this kata is on health, uh, there are still applications for self defense and for fighting, but uh, it is not emphasized as much as in other kata. Uh, Courtney, do, you, do we have any uh, questions or um, anything? Sensei, would you like to come next to me here? Yeah, so I, um, if you can raise your hand, if you guys know how to use the raise hand feature, if you have any questions, I can call on you. Um, you would just go into your participants uh, menu and there's an option on the bottom right hand. But, um, I have, I actually had a question um, is, so you talked about um, sort of the healing properties of the kata. Um, can you talk, speak more in more detail about what is healing about the movement and the breathing? Um, and then also, can you um, let us know if this kata is, could be applicable in our everyday? Like, could we do this kata or parts of it, um, you know, to practice mindfulness and breathing and healing um, within our bodies when we're like experiencing stresses. I know right now is a really heightened time for everybody. Um, and it, it would be, it would be really nice to know if we could ap apply some of this to our, our every day. Well, uh, okay. Uh, hi historically, uh, kata training uh, was an integral part of karate training. And over the years, uh, it's diminished because of uh, the sport aspect of karate training. Uh, in the old days, uh, a student could expect to learn maybe one kata every three years. That was the standard, as opposed to today, where even little kids know many, many different kata. Um, and that standard of learning one kata until you mastered it, it's because uh, the kata is so multi-layered. Uh, the breathing is, is supposed to uh, strengthen your lungs and increased circulation, okay? The muscle contraction is supposed to be from a relaxed state to a very intense uh, contracted state. 
right? It's supposed to build muscle power, muscle elasticity as well. So, uh, and then the synchronization of the breathing to your movements, to the muscle movements, that is also supposed to heighten your overall uh, uh, body. Um, there are in other styles as well, uh, katas that promote health. But this one is particularly noted for that particular aspect. Uh, it, uh, uh, some teachers have said that uh, if you don't, uh, you should do this kata every day. You should practice this kata every day. Practice the other ones as well, but do not miss practicing sanchin kata every day and it will promote good health. So, yes. <laughs> Great, thank you. Maybe I'll try to start doing this in the morning when I wake up. <laughs> I, I know like just watching you, it's so, I mean, I was, I was participating, I promise not Kemi. Um, <laughs> but, but, you know, even just watching and listening and observing, it is so grounding. Um, I can see how it, how it's healing, um, how it's a healing kata art form. Um, another question I had, and by the way, we have um, someone here from Venezuela. So it sounds, seems like we have people from all over. Oh, oh, it looks like we have a question from Amber. Go ahead, Amber. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Oh, uh, good afternoon, Sensei. Good afternoon, Akemi Sensei. Uh, how are you? Fine. Uh, you know me. Get through anything. So uh, my question here is something I've always wanted to ask you. And I'm, I'm pretty adept when it comes to meditation and the different levels of consciousness that you go through is uh, very intense, and I've seen Akemi do many katas. Uh, it's almost like she's so focused that she's at a different level of consciousness. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Uh, to me, it's almost like, um, particularly the way I practice kata, and when I'm especially trying to learn a new kata, is I try and go over it like, as many times as possible to try and build that muscle memory. But after a, a while, it turns into a little bit more like a, like a flow state sort of thing. Um, and it, you do kind of go into a, uh, a different mental space, I would say. You know, uh, especially like sometimes when you're competing, when there's a lot of, um, a lot of different, uh, different distractions. Right. Sometimes you're not even hearing the tournament going around you or you're not paying attention to um, it, It's not a tournament anymore. It's not a competition. You're just kind of grounding yourself and doing kata um, And then that kind of goes back to a point that sensei talked about earlier shuhari or uh, ri, uh, Transcendence or the freedom from rigid perfunctory movement and an effortless or seemingly spontaneous per performance unmarred by self-consciousness. That's the uh, definition over here. Um, and it, it ties that whole thing in. Mm -hmm. Let me just add a word about meditation. Yes, uh, sir. You know, we get a lot of inquiries. Do you meditate? Do you do uh, uh, all this uh, transcendental stuff? Uh, I, uh, it's not that I make light of it. Uh, I, I, I mention it and it is something that we do in our classes daily but it is so difficult to teach. Remember uh, that in, well, not remember, but in meditation, when we do seated seiza before class, after class, and we have that quiet time where you're supposed to meditate, it is to clear your mind. It, and clear your mind meaning not thinking about what you did, not thinking about what you're going to do, not thinking about how you feel at the time, it is supposed to be empty your mind, empty your mind, right? Right? Mushing, empty your mind, complete, clear clarity of mind. That's a very, very difficult thing to do. But if you read accounts of, uh, of Buddhist monks and Buddhist priests, you will see that their daily meditation, right? Three, four, five hours a day of just sitting and meditating has a tremendous impact on the mind and enhances the power of the mind. Uh, many, many years ago, I'm not sure, 30, 35 years ago, I recall an article uh, in, uh, I think it was National Geographic, where a team of American uh, journalists 
and camera crew followed a group of Tibetan monks up a mountain. And it was in winter. And all they had on were these cotton robes. And the film crew, uh, as well as the journalists on the US side, of course, they had their down jackets and gloves and whatever. All right. At night, when they bivouacked, they had tents, they had their down bags, everything. The monks, what they did was they found a little corner inside of the mountain and they just huddled together. The next morning, they shook off the snow and they were on their way. The film crew had to catch up with them because they <laughs> had so much difficulty from that night out in the cold. So uh, the mind, the human mind, is just this tremendous instrument, this tremendous organ. And uh, its powers are limitless. Its powers are limitless. Thank you so Thank you, much. Sensei. Um, I think we have time for one more. Thank question. you, Sensei. You're welcome. We have time for one more question. Um, we have uh, Madeline, I think. OK. Go ahead, Madeline. Hey. Um, so mine is not so much as a question, so much as a um, thank you for doing this because uh, I too was in a nasty car accident and uh, I went back to my sensei after the car accident. We practiced some things and he did some uh, Qui-Gon healing and things like that. And uh, I'm really glad to come across you in Colorado. Thank you. Thank you for the kind words. Well, thank you so much, Madeline, for sharing. Um, and then I think, let me put your, the Budokan's website in, I should have had that ready for you guys, but um, so you guys can actually be in touch with Sensei. There you go. Um, okay, Courtney, before you sign off, if, if I might, can we just do a formal bow to all your participants? Because that is our way of showing respect, and it's our way of saying goodbye and good luck. Absolutely. Um, can I just really quick, Sensei, um, I'm just going to tell everyone that next week we, ha we have another um, session, and this was just, you know, really um, incredible and powerful, and um, so grateful for you to, like, bravely share your story with us of healing, um, overcoming such a, you know, tragic moment in your life. And um, I know that uh, your your daughter too is carrying forward your, um, those principles and values. And, um, and I just am so grateful to you. Um, you know, next week we have a, a healing through movement class. So I think it'd be really interesting to, um, to see sort of another, uh, from a dance perspective, how you might heal through movement and maybe carry some of these principles of Bushido into that um, with you. Uh, so without further ado, please. Okay. Uh, just add one other point. Uh, my wife, Candace, also Candace Sensei, right? she sends her greetings and also she played a big part in the structuring of this program uh, for Akemi and me. So. Thank you to her. Yeah, thank you, Candace. Thank you, Sensei. Thank you, everyone.